Assalamu alaikum. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, Sheikh Didat. Like all Muslims, I'm incensed by what Rushdie has written, and I feel I must protest. According to what you said during your marvelous lecture to the Quran, we cannot nickname people or mimic, is that right? Then how, how would I feel when I read your book on the first line refer to Satanic Salman and the picture with the horns and the hat? Is that against the Quran or not? Can you please clarify that point for me? Thank you. Thank you. Well, let me say, look what he did to me. See, if I saw you, anybody will justify you swearing back. Am I right? Am I right? Yeah. If I saw you, you saw me. You saw me, I saw you. And people will say, well, you know, you just can't help. That guy did it to me. What he did to me? My natural reaction, I'm not perfect by God, by far from perfect. I'm, I'm... Could we have quiet please? Excuse me, you had your chance. If, if you would like to ask a question, please go to the back of the queue. Would you please be quiet, you had your chance to ask three questions. Now, you, why don't you line up? Why are you sitting there like a dead duck, you know? Why don't you line up there, you get your turn, you. Line up. Take your turn. Then we know who you are, what you're talking about. See, shouting from there. Now he's discussing, he's discussing strategy. Oh. Look, my son. I am like anybody else, like you, like anybody else. I am no saint. And I am not perfect. I am telling you, this is what Islam teaches. I, you, everybody, you must try to the best of your ability to live by it. Let's say to a degree I have fallen short of that requirement. I have done it. I have done it. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Next. The next questioner, please. Can identify yourself. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Omar. I'm a Muslim. I need no other identification except the title that Allah and His infinite wisdom, power, and grace is given to me. And that is that I'm a Muslim. I heard much of what you said and I agreed. And I heard much of what you said and I was hurt and disagreed. I was pained for the children that were here and the language. Of course, we live in a world where language such as that is often used. But what pained me the most was when I heard, if I can quote you, and please allow for my inaccuracies, sometimes I am often mistaken. If you live in a country, you should be willing to die for it. Well, there are many countries in which I'm willing to live, but there's certainly only one cause for which I'm willing to die. Please clarify yourself if you could. Yes. Thank you. You see, I made a statement that if a country is worth living in, it is worth dying for. I did say that. Islam teaches us that if you can't live, you can't practice your religion, you can't do things right, then you make hijrah. Allah tells us in the Quran that His earth is vast. You know, for provision, He will provide for you. Make hijrah and go. Go somewhere else. You have no right to remain. In a place now, if you are not allowed to practice your faith, your iman, our thing is now, if you are not in a position to practice your deen, you must get out. That is all. So, but if it's worth, I say, if it's worth living in, your country is at war and you sit at home and say, let the people die for you, for your children. I says, no, you must be prepared to defend the country against any outside attack. Right is right, wrong is wrong. But you owe certain loyalties to your country. If you are in Pakistan, you have to defend Pakistan. If you are in Saudi Arabia and there is conscription, in my country there is no conscription for the black man. But if there is, I can't help it. He said, look, if you live in this country, you have to fight for this country. Otherwise, get out. So this is the answer I can give you, my brother. That I said, if it's worth, if you think it's worth living in, then it's worth dying for. If it's not worth living in, then you are free. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, brother Sheikh, 
in bracket professor did it. Uh, in your opening speech earlier, you mentioned the course you took in South Africa relating to this uh, satanic salmon. I think I am full, in full support of what you did and uh, I am very pleased with the success you got. But will people say in predominantly Muslim countries and also Muslims living in this country follow the same course? Taking, being that the book was written here, published here, which means all those uh, actors, the Queen, the Head of State and other leaders who were accused or abused have read the book presumably or some others have read it and translated it to them. They knew it and yet they allowed it to be published. So if they didn't object to it, we as Muslims living in this country, though I'm not British but I'm living here, should we not protest to defend our own religion, our own faith, our own belief? Uh, may I know what you think about the action of our brothers and sisters in Bradford who really brought us to light to defend our cause? Thank you. I think you missed the point when I said that if I was here with you when this turmoil was taking place, I would have joined you in your marches, in your crying, in your book burning. I would have been one with you. Did I say that, if you remember? I said that. I would have been one with you. But now I said I have an advantage. I was far away and I was able, I was taking some time for me to see things. In other words, now I can formulate ideas which you in the midst of turmoil sitting on a hot stove you can't do. It's not your fault. I'm not blaming anybody. Said, look, why couldn't you do that? I said, look, the reason is you were in turmoil. You are on the run. Like Jesus Christ. You see it in the Bible. The man is on the move. Every time he opens his mouth, people want to stone him. So he's on the move. It's a different circumstances from another man who is at peace and rest and he's able to deliver a message. So I have that advantage and experience from other people's mistakes. I'm benefiting. So look, this man here on the program was questioned. Have you read the book? And our heroes, almost all, they said no. So I said, no, I mustn't fall foul of that. Suppose I go to Britain uh, and I offered 50,000 pounds to BBC TV. BBC TV, I offered them 50,000 pounds to give me five minutes. On prime time, to give them the best of Rushdie. I said, you want to read in public? You had the blasphemous banquet? Give me only five minutes and I give you 50,000 pounds. Give me five minutes to read to you the best of Rushdie. No reply. I offered ABC and PBS TV in America $50,000 for five minutes. Give me five minutes. Why I'm able to do that is I'm benefiting from my other brother's mistakes. They made certain mistakes. I said, I won't do that. You know, I might just share this with you. I think Sheikh Saadi Rahmatullahi, one of our great philosopher poets, he was asked, he says, where did you learn all these good manners from? Your good manners. You know, you're such a perfect man that we see, you know, well behaved. Where did you learn them from? So he said, I learned them from the unmannerly. So how can you learn manners from the unmannerly? He says, no, you see, everything I see in the other man that I feel is not right, I won't do it. So this thing you did like that, I won't do that. That mistake you said, no, I won't do that. So I learned my good manners from the unmannerly. What you? So I was only benefiting from other people's mistakes. That is all. Thank you very much. You are great.